So I'm with Jared Haven and uh, fucking Red Sox, man. Yeah, dominating. It's good to be a Boston sports fan. It's really I just, good. I just wanted to bring it up. I'm a Dodgers fan. Uh, I, I did grow up with the Angels, but when I got to L.A., you know, you start to root, root, root for the home team, mm-hmm. right? And, uh, you know, Dodgers, L.A. We sucked. We could not keep up with you. You guys, I got to give credit where credit's due. Are at Now, how happy on a scale of 1 to 10 are you? You know, honestly, I'm like, I'm an 8, I oh. think I'm an eight. Oh, I mean, oh. I'm always uh, like uh, happiness. I'm a ten, but the <laughs> thing was, there was never any peril. Like the whole thing about sports is the drama of it. The only time I felt really nervous about losing the World Series was at the end of Game Three when we blew it, and the beginning of Game Four up till about the sixth inning when we were down four nothing. Yes, and I was like, wow, Game Three might have really changed the tide because after we were up two nothing, going back to LA, I saw the way the Dodgers played. We had yeah. good pitching matchups coming up. I was like, I'm feeling pretty confident that we'll take. At least one in L.A. and then come back to Boston three two. Yeah, that's. And then I got nervous when we were down four nothing game four. That's where that. I was excited. I'm like, this is what we need. Totally, we win this game, then we win the next one because we're still in L.A. Oh and yeah. And then we, it's anybody's game. That would have changed everything. Absolutely, like game three, seven and a half. That was like that game three is the type of games that changed the entire series. Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Red Sox have every momentum. Thirteenth inning come. Kingsler has a routine ground ball to him, throws it away. Tying yeah. run comes in. Seven and a half hours later, <laughs> yeah. Dodgers win. Next day, you guys jump up four nothing. Puig hits that three run home run, that, in the which was inning. incredible. And I'm yeah. jumping up and down off the uh, yeah. It was though. There was a small moment where I thought, I just don't know if the Dodgers have the mental cap- capability to win this series. And it was when Puig hit that home run. They're at four nothing. It's the sixth inning, mind you. Dodgers still down two one in the series. Yeah. And Puig now everybody in Dodgers stadium going crazy. Yeah. Puig comes Probably out so. and does the old uh, tip of the cap. One of my things, the current call. Yeah. And I was thinking to myself, it's the sixth inning. Yeah. Game's not over yet. Like, you do a current call when you hit a game-winning home run in the ninth inning. Exactly. And this is what <clears> – and I'm with uh, my friend Tom Dagnino, Finstock, who yeah, you know. Yeah, of course. And he's a, b- a huge baseball guy. I'm, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm a baseball guy, but not like – I'm a USC Trojans football guy. Oh, okay. But Dodgers, you know, I'm watching this thing. He did that. He went, nah, you can't do the curtain call. No. He's like, ah, that's not good. Because and then I see the fire in, in the Red Sox eyes. Yeah. And how patient they were. They're just like, no, we just keep playing our game. It was no, I mean, I don't think you guys lost one game each. Yeah, so we won. It was crazy too because I think the, so we beat the Yankees in four, won that series 3 1. Then we beat the Houston five and Dodgers in five. So we went about 4 1. So we went, we went 11 and three in the playoffs. And the best record in the, in, in the MLB. I mean, 108 wins. So they had the best record in spring training, best record in regular season, and then the best record in the playoffs office because they won the World Series. But it wasn't even like that was the thing that there was no drama. I mean, there was drama to the playoffs. There always is baseball, yeah. right? But really, I mean, I think that they outscored, it was something like they outscored the Dodgers by like 12 runs in yeah, the five games. They outscored they Houston by like 13 runs. Or, uh, I think that they might have outscored Yankees by 13 runs, then Houston by eight. But regardless, they just dominated the entire way. So it was like, it's, it was really it's I, the, beautiful. O- the only moment I felt where, oh shit, here we go, was when we were down 4 nothing, And I was like, wow, Kingsler, Kings are going to be the new Bill Buckner. Yeah. You know, because I don't know if you remember Bill Buckner in the 86 World Series. He's the guy, the Red Sox first baseman. Yeah. We were up 3 2 in the series against the Mets. Yep. Routine ground ball goes right through his legs. We end up losing game six and then losing game seven. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It reminds me, I know what you mean when your team is so dominant and then you're just like, USC had a run. <laughs> When we won the national championship, went undefeated, went to the national championship game, 55-12, to 12, beating Oklahoma at the time. Mm-hmm. There was just no drama. There's no drama. All. But, uh, you know, I wanted to bring it up. But Congratulations. It's, well, thank you. The, I, like, the way I look at it is more <laughs> of, like, the big picture thing. Yeah. Like, man, Boston is just You're title crushing. town. It's unbelievable. You're, You're crushing th- right now because I remember the days when there was nothing. There was nothing. There was nothing. There was no Patriots. There was no Red Sox. The curse of the— uh, Bambino? Yeah, of course, the Bambino. 86 years it took us. Think I, about like where Red Sox fans were before 2004. Right. Curse the camp Bambino. There was always something to ruin the game. We talked about like B- uh, Bucky Dent in the, in the 1970s and Aaron Boone in 2003 hits it yeah. off Tim Wakefield. And then Bill Buckner and all these bad things are happening after we traded Babe Ruth right. in 1913 or Which whatever. Which where or the no, curse came from. Yeah. And, yep. and then all of a sudden 2004 happens. David Ortiz comes back. You know what it was about the Red Sox this year too? I don't think there was like a singular 
Like, the Patriots have Tom Brady, Red Sox have David Ortiz. This team, like, had a lot of players that I really loved. I love Mookie Betts. I love Chris Sale. David Price is sometimes hard to root for, but during the playoffs, he was nails. He was great. But there wasn't, like, that... That that marquee player kind of thing where there's, like, you know, oh, yeah, even people that don't follow baseball know who it is. Like, when David Ortiz comes up to play, like, I'll never forget, it was 2013 ALCS. It was Game 2. We were facing the Tigers. We ended up winning the World Series, but we were down 1-0 in ALCS. It was Game 2. David Ortiz came up. We we're down five one. Came mm-hmm. up with the bases loaded. It was like one of those moments where you're like, "Oh uh, yeah, okay." It's like you, you start getting the tingles, the goosebumps because it's David Ortiz. He's clutch. It's the big moment. We're down like one swing in the bat, and it's tie game. Of course, what he does first pitch, knocks yep. it out, ties the game, grand slam. It was just like you didn't have that in this series, you know? Because yeah. like Mookie Betts is your marquee player, and he did absolutely poop. It, you guys were slow and steady. You were methodic. You were just. Yeah, I, I can't talk about Zimmer. At least you're a Superman fan, oh, and we can we can hard. come together right now because I want to talk about that. Yes. Welcome, one and all. It's the Riley Roundtable. It's episode twenty. 20. I can't believe it. And this is a show that talks about movies. It talks about life. It talks about movies in life and everything in between. And as you heard, right up top, talking to the World Series champion, of course, Jared Haybon. Hey, hey, Ben, I keep, you know, I see Either the way. O. Tomatoes model, really. No, it's not, it's not really fair. Jared Haybon is here. We talked Red Sox because, of course, you just whipped the shit out of my Dodgers. Poor Dodgers. And not even my Dodgers. It's like I, I'm, I'm such a fan of, of watching. I love baseball games mm-hmm. live. I love going. Um, as I said, you know, I grew up an Angels guy. You might uh, love this. I was there when Reggie Jackson hit one out that, like, broke the record for whatever oh, okay. it was when he was playing with the Angels. And well, my, and my dad's, like, to. kidding me, like, going, this just broke a record. Those are some of the memories. But, again, congratulations. Thank you very much. Love hearing you talk about sports. But, my God, there's so much more that we have to get into. Because, as a lot of uh, people know from The Bachelor, Bachelor in Paradise, yep. Bachelorette, all that, newly engaged. Yep, newly engaged back in June. You are newly June. engaged. Well, not Back in April. April. So, you're yeah. a little bit before me. Yes. A little bit before. Um, we'll get into that because this is Movies in Life. But where... I started to connect with you as a friend, Mm -hmm. Superman. Totally. I mean, love the Superman, but we're going to get into all that. I love having you. Welcome to the show. Thank Thank you so much. Um, I got to ask, so you grew up in Boston? Uh, Oh, no, Providence. Providence. Rhode Island. Rhode Rhode Island, that's right. How did you get, just give me the rundown. How did you get out here to L.A.? Well, I was born and raised, so I was born and raised Warwick, Rhode Island, East Coast guy all my life. Spent 29 years there. I only moved to L.A. last November. And wow, so, it's been a, that, yeah, it's been short. Oh, super short. Yeah. I'm not like a big West Coast guy. How long mm-hmm. have you been out here? Oh, I grew up here. Yeah, oh, okay. I grew up so, in Orange County, Tustin, which we were talking a little bit off air. Matthew uh-huh. Lillard comes on Collider Live. He went to my high school. That's so freaking so, which, awesome. Yeah, it was such a small world. And I remember hearing, you know, my drama teacher was like, oh, yeah, Matthew Lillard went here. And I'm like, what? So I, I can't remember the timeline. When you were in high school, was he on Scream? Or did he you wasn't on Scream just, just yet. yet. He had just started to appear in like television, yep. small roles in film. And so it was like, you know, back then when you're a not a theater major then, it, I was in the drama school mm-hmm. or I was, you know, in theater arts. And it was like, I wanted to do this. I wanted to get to LA. Totally. So um, I just drove up the 405 freeway. <laughs> Got to do it. been here since 1994. Oh, wow. Did you do any plays back in high school? Oh yeah, I did. Uh, I did um, in junior high. I did um, West Side Story. I did West Side Story three times. Oh my god! I did uh, a children's theater, uh, which was like right up in Long Beach that I would go to. That was like extracurricular. Uh-huh. So we did West Side Story. I did action. Who are you in uh, West Side Story? Oh, I forget the name now. Yeah. I was. I you seem like a riff. I died. I remember that. You're Tony. No, no, I no. might have been. You riff. Riff dies. And then no, I think does Tony avenge Riff? Tony avenges Riff, yeah. He right gets so right? mad and he kills Bernardo. So I was, yes, I was Tony. You were Tony, because he, and then Tony. Hey, spoiler alert for a 75-year-old yeah, play. Yeah, in case you haven't seen it yet. In case wait, you haven't seen it. So, wait, who dies? Tony. Uh, okay, so then Riff gets stabbed, 
and dies. So I was Riff, and yeah. then my buddy was Tony. Because I remember the what I remember most is lying there and then keeping like one eye open because I wanted to see <laughs> what he was about to do. Because yeah. he like Riff takes the knife and like stabs him. Yeah, he's so mad he avenges me. Yeah, and then I just remember the curtain coming down, but I missed my mark. Cause you know I'm 12. I don't know what I'm doing. And then the curtain was coming down, but it was it like hit my shoulder, so I had to like scoot over. And I just remember everybody laughing, and I was That's like, "This awesome. is so embarrassing." Um, but I did some theater, yeah, and then I did a, I did drama in college, and I did I did a play, um, s- something butterfly. I can't remember, but it was about Madam World Butterfly. War, it, World War Two. Yeah, and, Madam uh, the Holocaust. Okay, yeah. and I played a Nazi. Oh boy, it was so like I remember. I'll never forget the beginning of the play. So the audience is obviously. Uh, in their seats, and then I had stage in front of them. I had to come behind, they didn't see me, so I started from the top of the stairs, uh-huh. and my first role, I started off the play, I was walking down the stairs with a swastika on my arm. Oh, no. I, we were like, I went full method, I guess. Yeah. And then I had to, like, I was reading names of uh, you know, the Jewish community that right. had been perished. And, oh, no. Oh, it was like, so I remember I remember thinking, like, man, this is this, intense. Yeah. But it was cool. It was fun. I miss, I miss doing plays, man. But uh, I, There's nothing like live theater. We have, no. we have, it's so funny because I did West Side Story, broke my nose in the middle of the play, mm-hmm. which was great because I sprayed the front row of the audience with How'd blood. How'd you break your nose? I got punched during the rumble. Oh, God. That, that, that stage combat didn't work. Yeah. It was legit, and I broke my nose. They popped it back into place, put some tape on. I go out for the next act. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sound of Music, I played Rolf, who becomes a Nazi, yep. <laughs> and had to put it on. Oh, God. Can you imagine these little kids running around Children's Theater? No. We didn't. I mean, it's a different world we're in right now. Yeah, it would never happen again. I, I, I don't think so. You know? um, but for me, yeah, so uh, I grew up in Rhode Island, and... Yeah. Um, Went to college there, went to College of Providence, and then I was working at restaurants for a while and, yeah. and, and managing a couple of restaurants. And then miraculously, a friend of mine nominated me to be on The Bachelorette, never yeah. saw the show. Got a phone call from Los Angeles when I was working one time. I don't know anybody in LA, so I didn't answer. And then 10 yeah. minutes later, my friend who signed me up is blowing up my phone, and I saw that I had a message from the LA number. And she's like, the bachelor is calling me. I signed you up. I, I forgot to tell you. Just call them back immediately. Yeah. So I call. I listen to the m- message, and then I call them back immediately. And they're like, hey, this is, you know, blah, blah, blah from ABC's The Bachelorette. We're looking for Jared. We want to get to know you more, see if you're single, see if you're open to go through this casting process. Wow. Of course, I'm like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Of course, I'm open to it. And then never think I'd get on the show, but right. I remember thinking like, man, it'd be freaking cool if like I meet a producer or like they fly me out to LA if they want to meet me. Yeah. And then just step by step, I had to take pictures and sign forms and they were like, okay, we want 10 full body shots, 10 waist up and then five head shots. I was oh like, I don't Lord. have any of this. Yeah, it was crazy. So I went with my mom. I'll never forget. It was like a cloudy day. Went to the park near our house. I had like a gray sweater on. She's taking <laughs> pictures of me. I was like, this is stupid. But miraculously sent them in. And then, you know, step by step, I met with them in New York. And then they flew me out to L.A. And then they were like, yeah, we want you on the show. Oh I was my like, God. all right, cool. Yeah, it was a crazy time. I remember I had to make a 10-minute video. And they like give you instructions and they're like, yeah. okay, we want to see like a, a day in the life of Jared. They, we, you know, we want you to talk about past relationships. We want you to like make it your own. Talk about what you're looking for in a relationship. They were like, if you had, uh, you know, uh, so a hometown date, like if you had to bring somebody to hometown, what would you do? Blah yeah. blah 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 blah. Okay. So I made like this 10 minute video. I got some help with my friends too, and uh, I just like made it my own. I put like a little compilation in there with Rob Thomas music. Very and, like, nice. I just yeah, I, I had uh, my mom film my dad and I playing catch because that's what we'd always do my i remember crystal was like she was like listen you have to like you're like the all-american guy just like do that very true yeah and i was like all right so I'm, I'm playing catch with my dad in the backyard but it was fun to make and then miraculously got on that show and then did a couple seasons of bachelor in paradise mm-hmm. and then still lived in rhode island and a buddy of mine who's, uh his name is nick he he was like you should move out to la with me just stay here for a couple months see if you like it you've never moved out of rhode island right so i was like all right i'll do it i was here for a couple months didn't really enjoy it all that didn't much. Take. Just didn't take. I'm just, yeah. I like, I especially uh, 30 years back in Rhode Island, small state in yeah. America. Like, my family's there. I'm comfortable there. It's just it's home, you know? Yeah, I get it. I'm so, lucky because I can drive down to Orange County and visit my my family anytime I want. So totally. I always felt, you know, like I was home. Exactly. You're, so. you're, you're far enough away where you feel... S- isolated but you also don't feel like you can't get to them within two hours exactly exactly that's a nice feeling to have and so but then uh but then things started uh you know going with me and the missus with yeah and she lives in in la and so i was like okay well i'm gonna be here Mm because i want to be with her yeah and it wasn't really an option and so 
been living here ever since, and we ended up getting engaged, and it's been wonderful ever since, and that's kind of like the story of me right now. And that's it's, that's it in a nutshell. I love it. I asked nutshell. for it, and you gave it. And I gave it. It's crazy being in the Collider Studios, man. That's the cool thing. I remember yeah. watching... Um, so, like, I think I first started getting introduced to this entire world. One of the first videos I watched was um, Jeremy Johns. He was talking about mm-hmm. uh, the announcement of Zack Snyder getting oh yeah um, getting a hired Man of Steel? as Man of Steel. Yeah. So it was like back in 2011, 2012, I think. Yeah, it was around then. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and so I was like, oh, that's. I remember just being fascinated, like hearing people talk about movies and like yeah. news that I heard because I would be always on IMDb or I used to check out Yahoo movies all the time. Oh, I would do that. Do yep. you remember they had the grading system but it was like mm-hmm. A, A minus B, A minus B, plus. B, yep. Totally. I don't even know if I haven't checked Yahoo in a long time. I don't I don't think I've done it. Yeah, but no. I, I, a lot like you, I was doing I was always going on the the geek websites mm-hmm. and then checking it out, checking it out, checking it out and being so in that world that I loved it so much. Then I, I fell into this. Yeah. I mean, I fell in with Schmoes No because Christian was a friend of mine that I met mm-hmm. waiting tables. And we all just all had a lot in common. And so then before I know it, Collider is one of those sites I would always, always go to. And then I'm like blinked and I'm like, I'm I'm a producer here now? Yeah. That's pretty fucking that's cool. That's freaking awesome, man. I like it. But that's where we share a lot of the geek stuff. But oh, yeah. I, I, which, uh, which I love and do want to get into. But I got to ask you about this bachelor process that you brought up. Was totally. there ever a moment that you went – this is real. What I, I don't want to do this. Um, did you have oh, any yeah. hesitance? You well, know? once they finally called, because the entire time I went through the casting process, I never thought my wildest dreams they'd actually want me for the show. Right, right. It was like this heightened sense of reality where I just felt alive. I was yeah. like talking to LA producers, and yeah. it was like this cool moment where you don't. You're like, it would be cool to get on the show, but it's it's probably not going to happen. But it's just like you just they're like, hey, do this. And you're like, OK, I'll do that. I'll do yeah. that. <laughs> and then they finally called and then they were like, hey, we want to send you a show form agreement to sign. And uh, we want you out here for three weeks for, for filming, if, if that's possible. That's great. And that was The Bachelorette. Right? That was The Bachelorette. And so okay. uh, I called my mom. And she was super excited, and then I got the contract, and the contract's like 25 pages long, and oh, it's, all, it's all legality, so yeah. I don't know what the hell it is. So I'm trying to, like, my dad's helping me read through it, and my sister um, is helping me read through it. She ended up, she wasn't a lawyer at the time, but she was very familiar with the law, the law and now she's a lawyer. Oh, that's so cool. And yeah, she went back to law school at 29, and so. Good for her. Never too late. She was like. It's never too late. No, right? she was just like, I want to go. Yeah, my cousin did that. He went back at 35. Yeah. That's yeah, it. and he's a lawyer now, and he's uh, a few years older than me, but he's t- totally into this. You know, it's never too late. No, it's never. You got to just do that. it. And so, um, and then I remember sitting at the table, and then being like, "Am I going to really go on a reality TV show?" Right. And because it's nerve wracking, because I know. Ne- so I watched one season of the show mm-hmm. before I went on just to film- familiarize with it, because like I know of the show, but I never yeah. really watched it. And then you know, it's scary because like people like look like crap sometimes, and like. You're like, oh, I would never do that. I would never do this. But like, one when, when I'm about to sign the contract, I'm like, man, sometimes I do get jealous. Because sometimes, like, I do say dumb stuff. Like, yeah. what if I say something stupid on camera? Well, I was talking to my mom and my dad about it, and close friends, and they're like, you are gonna regret it for the rest of your life if you don't go on this. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I got to do it. And then yeah. so signed, and then flew out to L.A. And it was like that moment was the real moment. That moment, I felt like, do I do this? And then when they. F- when the show, when you first get flown out to the show, you get secluded in a hotel room before you actually go to the bachelor mansion. Okay. Yeah. And so when you're in that hotel room, that's, you know, when it really starts kicking in because it's oh, like, all right, yeah, tomorrow night you're going to be walking out of the limo and, you, you know, you think about anything you're going to say yet. And you're going through all these interviews and you have to talk to so many producers and like, you know, um, you know, they make you just like talk to people. You know, they do like a background check on you. And yeah. You have to do all this crap. And the thing is, you're just in your room the entire time. Most of the time, they'll just come to your room. Yeah. And so you're just like in this box, like with your thoughts and anxiety and stress being like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to do this, I guess. And God. that's when it's like, should I, I, I feel like I'm going to throw up. And so that was the only time where I was like, I, I don't know if I can do this. Yeah. And um, so you mentioned a lot of theater mm-hmm. that you did. I mean, did you want to be an actor did, or are you an actor? I mean, I, I don't think I know that or not. Uh, no, I'm not an actor. Yeah. Uh, I think about getting back into it. So I've always been a huge film buff. And yeah. like one of my goals is just to make a movie one day. There it is. And so that's, yeah. Yeah. I just to, see that. You know, just to make a movie, make my own creative thing, whatever yeah. that, that may be. And so. Um, so that's when I first started getting into drama was I did some in junior high and then mm-hmm. I never did any in high school. And then when I went to college, a buddy of mine 
and uh, myself needed to take an art class. Mm -hmm. So I was like, let's do an acting class. And so we did it and I had a blast. He wasn't really that fond of it. And so then I started doing more acting and more drama and improv in college and then ended up becoming a theater major for about two semesters. Yeah, that was Um, my major. Yeah. Yeah. But at it's the, great. It was so much fun. I loved yeah, it. Yeah, I love the yeah the theater the theater school at USC was great because then I'm right next to the USC film school. You went to USC? Yeah, that's oh, no wonder you're such a Trojan yeah, fan. That's, that's badass, man. I wish I said that. Like that's the only regret because I went to a small state school in Providence, so I right. wanted to be like. But you can be like, yeah, I went to USC. Yeah, yeah well, I was very lucky, I will say, because my dad went, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he was like, you're and you want to be a theater major? I'm like, and, and film. I know. I'm going to do film, which I know a lot. You know, and it. The USC Trojan alumni, they're great. Yeah. You know, uh, Roxy Stryer, you know Roxy. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, of course. She, USC as well. Oh, shit. Oh, we had, okay. She was on the Riley Roundtable a couple weeks ago. And just that this weird kind of things that people find themselves branching out of from USC, luck, knowing people, whatnot. It's, it, it's great. But, I mean, a lot of people always ask, should I go to film school? Should I go to theater school? What do you say? Uh, yeah. Has it, yeah. I mean, it's, it's what? Theater school? Maybe not. Mm-hmm. You could go. You could move out to L.A., start meeting people, yep. go to acting classes. They're all over. You could meet a lot of people. But you can't beat that college experience. Yeah. You know what I mean? And for film school, go to film school if you can. Mm-hmm. I mean, you learn so much. You start shooting stuff. I met so many people who, you know, my friend Eric Hayes, who was also my uh, fraternity brother of mine. I mean, he's all over the place. He did all that wa- The Walking Dead promotions just this year. Yeah. These shots that were like kind of merging in on. He's like, yeah, I shot that. And I'm like, bro, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So it, it's great. But I, you know, if you want to do it, you can. I say do it. But, I know. Uh, so you come out here. I, I'm fascinated by the experience of The Bachelor. Yeah. I really am because uh, I, I've watched maybe a couple seasons and it's usually, I'll be honest with you, and it's probably like a lot of dudes. The girlfriend is making you watch it, or the yeah. you know, or your mom is loving it. But I got it, <laughs> I got into it. Oh yeah, it's I totally addicting, got man. into it with my friend uh, and my my girlfriend at the time. Paradise is addicting. Do you I've watch never Parad- seen Paradise. Oh my I know. god, bro! I know. I'm telling you, if you even like like The Bachelor, and Bachelorette a little bit, yeah, you're gonna fucking love. Can I swear? I, my bad. Of course you oh, can. Okay. Yeah, I've been cursing uh, the whole time. Uh, you are gonna love Paradise. It's this literally. Is- the producer, so the the head producer on the show, he's really good friends with James Gunn, who I just met for the first time. It was awesome. It was when uh, two nights ago, and Holy so shit. so it was this guy's birthday, and he's good friends with James Gunn, and James Gunn actually has been on. So during Paradise, they have something called After Paradise, which is yeah. like a little after show. James right. Gunn was on it one time. Oh my god, it was cool. That's amazing. Of course, I wasn't on it, which I was so mad about, <laughs> but it was awesome. So James Gunn was at the birthday dinner the other night, and it was just the coolest thing because you stand in there. I'm like, oh my god, I got to say something. Like I said something. So I finally he he came up to me and he was like, hey, congratulations, because he's a big fan of the show. Oh, that's awesome. And then I was like, hey, big fan of yours, you know. And then I started talking to him about um, DC and like, because I was like, I was congratulations where, on Suicide yeah. Squad 2. And he's like, yeah, I'm working on it right now. Blah, blah, blah. He started going into it. And then he started talking about like all these characters and like the differences between DC and Marvel. It literally felt like I was talking to a buddy about it. And then so it like it was this like this. Incredible. It was awesome because it was this awe moment for like. 30 seconds of being like, oh my God, it's James Gunn. And then like the conversation just started changing and it just felt like I was talking to a buddy about like, oh yeah, his thoughts about Guardians and Marvel and where that was going and the problems that the DCU has had up to this point and like his thoughts about how changing it and what he wants to do with Suicide Squad. Like very vague terms, he's not telling yeah. me specifics, but like, but it was like for three minutes I was just having this conversation and then like it clicked again. I was like, Oh, I'm not talking to a friend. I'm talking to James Gunn. I'm talking to the guy that is actually making decisions in the DCEU. And this it was is like incredible. Holy moly. It was it was it was pretty cool. I was wondering because when you were talking about it, I was like, oh my God, is did he touch on the Marvel stuff? Did he touch yep. on DC stuff? Well, he just like he just talked a little bit about the differences between two universes, yeah, but obviously. Nothing about the the whatever that is. Oh hell, God, was. I didn't even want to touch that. That's I, ridiculous. And so. that's when you're in a situation, and I'm sure, you know, what we do, like in that it's like we all come around, we do schmo down together, you've been on the shows, we love the same kind of stuff. But when you meet somebody that's like you want to work with them, you're there that you admire them. Mm-hmm. I couldn't imagine asking him, dude, what's it happened with Marvel, man? What was that bullshit about, huh? And yeah. it's like he'll shut down. I'm oh, sure. Yeah. I, 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 I'm so glad you got to talk to him about geeky stuff. Oh, totally. That's it, the thing I wanted to talk to him about because yeah. that's the stuff that I love and the stuff I'm interested in. Yeah. Like, you know, if I ever like met, uh, I don't know, whether it be Josh Whedon or oh, yeah. you know Zack Snyder or anybody in that universe, that's yeah. what I would want to talk about. Like, 
you know, the actual characters and the geeky side of it. Because it's that's the cool part. Because you're, it feels like you're talking to a, a just a buddy. It's like yeah. I'm talking. It's like we're just talking around here, you know. Yeah. And absolutely. then you're like, oh my god, no, this this is the guy that makes the decisions. Yeah. Of the stuff that we discuss, and I'm talking about it with him. So it's a very surreal moment. But yeah. Um, sorry to get back to the original point. The reason no, I bring yeah. that up is because uh, one of the head producers, he says that Paradise is like the Avengers. Because like totally Bachelor is. and Bachelorette are their solo movies. Right. Like everybody has their solo thing. Yep. And then they all come back. Few stars together. step up. Few people get po- you know popular. Exactly. They want that because I know enough about Paradise. Yeah. They're grabbing some really popular people that maybe didn't get all the way through. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and then they're they're brought together now. In that, so when you, how long did you last on your initial season? I was fourth. You were fourth. So yes. you're four of you left. Yep. Wow. Yeah, it, I made it pretty far. So my bachelor, her name is Caitlin. She's incredible. Yeah. Uh, I just got really lucky that we hit it off because on night one, you have to ask, you know, you have to steal her. And that's the th- like when on the show, they always go up and they're like, hey, can I steal you for a second? And on rose ceremonies, that actually has to happen. It's, it sucks. You have to like go up and be like, hey, can I can I steal her for a so second? So you basically have to interrupt somebody trying to totally get somewhere because you don't have a lot of time no and especially on night one man there's yeah. 25 guys so like you if you're lucky you're spending maybe five to ten minutes with each girl and yeah. then she decides like hmm, all right you know yeah do i keep you or do i not so you have to make an impression so i got lucky that um i quoted i forget what exactly happened but we were walking away and um i think i quoted dumb and dumber <laughs> god bless like i you, said sir. i said, I said something you. you know where yeah. i was like uh I think I was like, oh, you know, I'm, I desperately want to make love to a schoolboy. Or so I, I, I quoted, I can't remember what quote I said, but yeah. And uh, she was like, is that Dumb and Dumber? And I was like, yeah. And then she's like, my favorite movie to quote is Dumb and Dumber. So we had like a five minute conversation. You're in. Totally. That was the game changer first, right there. First rose, especially, I bet you're in because oh, you already made that impression. Exactly. And so we started talking about Dumb and Dumber. And then I was like, well, what other movies do you like to quote? And she's like, well, I love to quote Anchorman. And I was like, oh, my God. God, this is gonna be this is great, awesome, and so we kind of hit it off, and and it went really well, and so I made it top four, and it was it was fun. We got to travel, you know, went to yeah. Ireland. I had some really cool dates. I had a one, of, I had two, I had great dates, but two that stand out was mm-hmm. I had a date in New York at the Met, ooh, and so and it was rented out. So it was, wow. it was it was after closing hours. We didn't get into like. 11 p.m. but they gave me a brand new tux and they fitted me to the nines and That's i was wearing fantastic. like this old like 1940s james bond watch or oh it looked like God. a james bond watch it wasn't an actual one but that was they didn't obviously let me key if they needed that back but yeah and so that was incredible and then they had a helicopter you'll appreciate this so we had so sometimes on the date, you know, you're going on the date, and right? Then, you know, they'll be like, oh, by the way, the, the the date's not over yet, and then they'll take you to another portion of the right. date. Like, and here's so, your own spaceship. Exactly. So <laughs> ours, we get in the limo and we drive, and there's a helicopter waiting for us. We had a helicopter ride at night over New York City. Oh, that's incredible. And the pilot was even saying, like, this is the lowest I've ever gotten. Wow. Over the buildings, and uh, it was, we, f- you like I said, you'll appreciate this. We flew past the Statue of Liberty. I know night. where you're going with this. And so I started geeking out to myself because you know exactly where I'm going with this. Oh, and she's yeah. like, why are you laughing? And I was like, okay, listen. <laughs> There's a scene in the original 1978 Superman yep. where Superman and Lois are flying, the flying sequence, and I just they fly right past the Statue of Liberty. Yep. And that's all I could think about in that moment. And You're a good man, Jared. I, I like this. <laughs> yeah, and so she found it very endearing, which is great. Yeah. And um, and so and then the other day I had I had a private concert with the Cranberries, which was pretty oh, badass. My yeah. God. In Ireland. It was it was amazing. And this was obviously before Yeah, uh, I know. That's Doreen immediately passed away. Yep. She's got a kid. It's still yeah. it's still like oh my god, yeah, she's not here anymore. I know, it's terrible. She was so I only got to talk to her for a few minutes, but we, uh we got back to the hotel after it was over and then we like crossed paths. We were staying at the same hotel. Yeah. And then we started talking for a few minutes and she like it was it was so nice because she was just so open to the idea of talking to me. It was a late night. She's obviously, yeah. you know, cranberries yet doesn't need to give me the time of day, but like we were just walking past the hallway. I was like, oh, hi. And she was like, oh, hey, da da da. Like, a thing. you know, it was great performing for you guys. I was like, yeah, it was, uh, it was wonderful. Like, the pleasure Dude, was all mine. Yeah. This and is so, incredible. Yeah. She was so sweet. She was great. I but, always forget when, because it's a reality show, mm-hmm. first and foremost. And, um, and I watch this and I've, and I've seen, you know, episodes and you're, you're talking about, you're like wondering, is he going to make it? Is he going to make it? And you're, you're into the storylines, you're into the drama. 
Um, is there ever a point there in your mind where you're like, I can't believe all that I've done, like that it's worth it, that even if I get cut, even if she doesn't go, how like in are you with your heart versus like on the outside, like it's going to suck if I get cut. But like, man, I did these experiences is something that, you know what, end of the day, I'm all right. Yeah, I think that's a little bit of both. I think my first experience your heart is very much in it, yeah. and it's because it's you're the first time going through this crazy process, and you're like, all I care about is her. All I want is to do end up with her, and like you're just like, you know, you're in this bubble of of love and romance, and you kind of just like forget everything else because your entire focus is about developing this relationship, right. which is a weird thing to be in because that's that's all the stress and anxiety. That's the only thing your life is consumed by is getting roses. Yeah, and so, but it's funny. So like when you get sent home, you're like, oh my God, this is devastating. This yeah. is horrible. And then I remember I got back home and I was like, no, I'm fine. Why? <laughs> like it was sad and yeah. I didn't want to say goodbye, but I'm okay. It's fine. And then it's funny because the second and third time I did the show, um, like if somebody didn't get a rose, it, it's funny. A buddy of mine would be like, they're going to be fine. <laughs> like it's it's gonna be fine. Yeah, because it it changes once you go through the process more. You're like, I hope I stay, and like especially if you don't have that that deep of a connection with the person, it's like I hope I stay. But like if I go home, it's fine. Yeah. Everything will be fine. Like I'm still gonna get like it was a cool experience. Like I, I get to watch myself on TV, and yeah, it'll be fine. And and how much is that? Is like you're under this microscope that I couldn't imagine. That I couldn't imagine. The cameras in your face. Do you have producers sitting there telling you anything to like? Keep, oh yeah, keep, like, you're always with producers. Maybe if you go this way uh, when you're talking, or is it like how? I mean, I know it's real because your your lovely fiance, but oh yeah, like how is it? Are you doubting yourself inside? Like, am I feeling this for her, or is this what I'm feeling all you know the time? I mean? Yeah, that's the battle you have. It's like okay. Am I heightening this? Am I, is yeah. this room? Like, because I really is like this her. Real, but yeah, right? am, am I in love with her? I, it's yeah. like this constant battle because you're always with producers and you're always just talking about your feelings and you're you're either talking about them with the producers or you're talking about them with the other guys or you're talking yeah. about them with the girl. And it's like this nonstop. <laughs> it's all you talk about. So it's just like you're in your own head at this point. And, um, you know, there's always, uh, yeah, producers don't tell you what to do, but like, you know they they know what they're doing and like you just doing. you just have conversations with them and, and and it's like well how are you feeling and they know how to get to a certain point by like you know beating around the bush or taking a direction but yeah i mean it's it's the scariest part is when you come off the show yeah because like then i meet guys like christian yeah who is like oh yeah i used to be a producer on the show and he was like i was behind the scenes though yeah and like he, he tells was. you some of the stuff you know that happens that like yeah i you know i have to i have to watch everybody yeah. It's like, Ooh, yeah. You just forget that like there's cameras there, but there's somebody watching your every move. That, that that's would, scary. Yeah, it, it was somebody that has anxiety. <laughs> when I get a bad comment on a YouTube video, oh. I'm like, oh, and it's uh, that must be difficult. But what I love is then your fiance Ashley. Yes, I, I want to get into that because I love you guys came on live, and I've talked to you off camera. I've talked to you on camera, and I just love your dynamic. Aww. I've never seen you got I didn't watch Paradise. Uh -huh. I haven't seen it. But I, I know enough. I mean, pop culture, this was a thing. Yeah. People were like really rooting for you guys to uh -huh. get together. Thanks, bud. And I, it's like, what was that like when you realize mm -hmm. that truly you're like, ooh, that's her. Um, that's And then you have the world watching. You have the world rooting for you to get together. Like, is there something in you that's like, wow, I don't want to fuck this up. I don't want to lose her. I is this going to get in the way? Like, what is that like falling in love with her? And then here we are. I think we're lucky, or at least I'm lucky, because we we did meet on the show, but our yeah. love didn't really blossom until off the show, right? Because um, we went through some hard times. Because I think as a guy, for me, I am very much uh, a guy who. Um, uh, what's a what, what's a, I'm trying to get at? Like, all right, on Boy Meets World, there's I I love Boy Meets World. Nice, it's one of my yeah, favorite yeah. shows of all time. And there's one episode I don't know if you remember where like the guys all screw up. Like Corey does something stupid to Panga, Sean does something stupid to Angela. Yeah, vaguely. Uh, Feeny is like dating this girl, but like does something stupid because he's overthinking things. And then Corey's dad does something stupid to the mom. So at the end of the episode, Eric comes on stage and he's like, uh, since the beginning of time. They're like all at this club, and then for some reason, Eric comes on stage. He's like, since the beginning of time, men have been stupid. <laughs> and like, that's where I kind of put myself in. 
and yes. Yep. And like, cause yep. I, it's, 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 I, it's crazy because I'm I'm just I'm fearful of everything. I'm fearful of success. I'm fearful of failure. Yeah. Um. I'm just afraid of anything. But if I, you know, separate myself from things that I really care about, then I can't fail. Or if I do succeed, they can't find out that maybe I'm not good enough. Because mm-hmm. it's just mm-hmm. so God. that's it was like this ongoing battle between her and I. Uh, not a battle, but like battle within for myself about like do I try to pursue something with Ashley because she was very much adamant about dating me and and Mm -hmm. we became best friends and that's i think i appreciate you saying all the nice things because that means a lot to me when people could see that like they're not just yeah fiancés they're they're literally best friends and it's it's it was it's the first thing and i i really noticed when i saw you guys together um even before i mean i knew you guys were friends and Mm -hmm. she she would come here and hang out and watch the showdown she came here for me for that god she's this is the best so she knew I was a big Collider fan, yeah. Shimodon fan, and, and um, we had, uh, I met Christian very briefly at Screen Junkies. Right, yeah. Um, because Andy Signor, before the whole thing went down, right. uh, was a diehard Bachelor fan. Oh, and wow. like, he got, in, Ashley had a job interview, I think, at Clever, which is Defy Media. Yeah. And then so she ended up meeting Andy, and then they were like, he wants us to come in and talk. And so we went in, did Screen Junkies, and then they were having a um, movie fight. It was a Star Wars movie fight that Christian was on. Oh, nice, yeah. And so this was on, uh, it was next week. I was supposed to fly it back to Rhode Island, but I've canceled it. Or okay. I, excuse me, I flew back to Rhode Island, and two days later, I flew back to LA because nice. I, I wanted to meet Christian that badly because I was like, I need, oh, I wow. want to get into this world. Yeah. Like, I just, I love Collider. Yeah. I love, because I used to watch AMC before it turned over. Right. And then I watched Screen Junkets all the time and uh, every YouTube channel you could possibly think of with movies. Yeah. And so, um, so then I met Christian and then he was like, you should come to Shmodan one time. I was like, yeah, let's take your information blah, and he exchanged with Ashley too because he met Ashley. Mm-hmm. And then I'm living in Rhode Island at this time, and then he invited us, and I couldn't go, and she she went. That's it was right. it was Hector Navarro versus oh uh, Robert that, Meyer Burnett maybe it yeah. was a while ago. It was an inner geek to match. Yes, yeah, I think and, it was a big spectacular kind of thing. It was like a, it might have been yeah we we might have filmed it on a Saturday or something. It was years ago, but yeah. she she went because she was like, I want you like. I went for you so I could like almost be like, yeah, like, oh, next time Jared's in town, you should invite us again. Were you together at that point? No, we were just best friends. That's why she's the fucking best. She watched Superman on her own. That's when I think I fell in love with her. So on the show, when we first met. That's amazing. Exactly. When we first met, you go through this process, the same head games go through you. Yeah. Okay. Is this real? What's real? What's not real? Am I heightening things? So like, it's hard to really just trust your gut in those things. Yeah. Because everybody's telling you five different things. And so when we got off the show and a couple months later, we ended up seeing each other and I was like, wow, this girl is incredible. And we, the thing was, we just got along. There was like this instant yeah. connection and chemistry and banter that was like undeniable. Yeah. And so we were talking about movies and I was like, oh, my favorite movie, like my, my perfect night is watching the 1978 Superman with like a pumpkin candle, red wine and Chinese food. Damn. That's kind of like my perfect It's a night. great night, right? <laughs> yeah. So... Fast forward four or five days later, she sends me a picture, and on there's red wine with Chinese food and a and a candle, and on the TV is Christopher Reeve, and she's like, she's like, I'm recreating a perfect night, and I was like, this woman is incredible. She's so she watched the, the first two Superman, That's Superman amazing. by herself. Um, she watched the first one, and I told her to watch the second one because I was like, you're gonna enjoy the love story in that one yeah. a lot more than you will in the first one. It's yeah. far more focused on it. Yeah. And um, that's when I knew I was like, I'm an idiot. So it just took a little while to overcome my own insecurities and stupidity. But uh, I'm the luckiest man alive because she's incredible. Uh, I get it. I get it. You know, uh, we'll share notes here because four years I was with my fiance now. Mm -hmm. But um, I am a divorced. I have been divorced. And uh, a lot of people know that. And so I was so hesitant. I was very, very scared because the one thing going through my mind was I don't want to fuck this up again. I don't want to feel like it's my fault. I don't want to, like, hurt her. And so I was dragging my feet. Yeah. I was completely dragging my feet. And there, there is a moment with her where I went, what am I doing? Yeah. Um, where – and even Ashley, we were, we were doing the the advice and uh, she said, you know, was if, if we're – I can't remember what it was, but I remember – we had this talk where it was like to come to Jesus moment, mm-hmm. where it's like, where are we going with this? But it was, it's funny. She does, my fiance does that. She'll like, I want to see this because it's important to you. 
I'm like, okay. And here it is. She got into Star Wars because she knows I like Star Wars. Mm. And the Superman connection is she would always be like, I have a thing for guys with dark hair and blue eyes, like Superman. And mm-hmm. she told me that on our second date. She's like, Superman has been always somebody. And I just like, huh? Yeah. Okay. You got my attention. But she did something where it's just so small where she like, I was in the shower and she just pulled the thing back and goes, hi. And I was like, I need to marry you now. Yeah. And then a year later, we were engaged. There so. we go. That's the story, man. But you can also see your perspective on it because I'm sure you give yourself shit sometimes. Be like, oh, like I waited so long. But at the same time, you know, I, I going through like this this planning of, of a wedding. Yeah. Once it's if I had to do it again, I'd be scared shitless. So. Yeah, it, it's it's tough. And, and and on that, how is the wedding planning going? Uh, it's going well. So we picked yeah. a venue. We're, so we're getting married in Rhode Island. Nice. Um, okay. It was I got lucky because when we got engaged, I always envisioned a New England type wedding. Yeah. And I want because I just that's only weddings I've ever really been to. Yeah. And then she was like, I'd love to get married in Rhode Island because she's from Virginia. Yeah. She was like, you know, my family is only about an hour away from there and I don't have any like sentimental attachment to anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you want to get married in Rhode Island, I love Newport. She's been there a few times. It's like, let's do it. So yeah. that's uh, we, great. That was awesome. We went to the venue shop. We picked a venue out. And so now we're just like getting the guest list together, all that good stuff. So, yeah. but it's definitely, it's, it's, it's fun. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's fun to plan for the big day and like decide who's going to be in like the bachelor party and it's also fucking work it's work it's Holy definitely work shit. yeah yeah we so we just found our venue as well and congratulations um, yeah thank you we got very very lucky on that uh did you an- have you announced it like you yeah know, i kind of announced where? it i can yeah i can tell you I'll, I'll keep some names uh private because of but um did you ever know that i did the star wars trilogy in 30 minutes play no. did i ever tell you about this off uh-uh. air or anything so um, at USC, I met this guy named Patrick T. Gorman, who mm. was a master's um, playwright at mm-hmm. the time. And he said, you know, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mount a production of Star Wars. We're going to do all three of the original trilogies, 10 minutes each for 30 minutes. And it became this cult thing. We performed in Edinburgh, Scotland at the Fringe Festival. We took it to Paris and did a French-American film uh, wow. which is a th- festival. So if you could picture it, it's all three movies done in 30 minutes. And everybody plays a million roles. So I play Obi-Wan and the Emperor, as well as like an Ewok, a Stormtrooper, yeah. uh, Bib Fortuna, all these different things. So my Princess Leia, I got to know very, very well. Mm-hmm. Her husband played young Obi-Wan when we expanded and became the Saga and did all six movies. This gotcha. is way before the sequels. Um, and so uh, she was very, very – she's like this light mm-hmm. just like just emanates from her. And she just bought his, uh, this house with her husband, and we just went for her baby shower. And this house is, like, gorgeous. Huge backyard, like, infinity pool, like, this beautiful tree and all these things. And long story short, my fiancé is talking to her and a number of people. And the next day I get a, a text. It's like, yeah, you're going to have your wedding here. And I went, I'm sorry? And she went, yeah. I, I know you guys, you know, we're – we're on our own doing this. You know, it's like maybe a little help from the parents, but it's on us. And I guess my fiance got to talking to these girls and mm-hmm. they were all in a corner and she just offered it. Wow. Like that's that. incredible. And it's, it's that's like, so sweet of, I know Aww. I couldn't. And I went, are you serious? Come on. Don't stop fucking with me. Aww, and she's like, no, awesome. I want you to pay it forward. I want you to just, I want love in this house. I want to help. I want, yeah. it, it was just like one of those things. And you're that, like, I'm never going to pay it forward, but I appreciate you giving me the venue. <laughs> I know. Thanks a lot. No, by the way, we're yeah. going to re, uh, we're going to knock down that wall. We're going to knock down that wall. We're going to knock down that fucking yeah, wall. Yeah, yeah, Good job, Saka. Just yeah. sign here. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, man. So Congratulations. It, thank you. Yeah, it was really nice. It's great because it's going to be in LA. You know, we have yeah. family in Orange County can come right up here. But yeah, so we locked in the venue. Where are you as far as, I did read something now. Did The Bachelor want to get involved? Uh, no, I mean, they did a little bit, but it was more of um, kind of like get, we could have gotten married down in, in Mexico during Paradise. Okay. And it was just not something we really wanted to do. Yeah. We, we have – we They wanted to air it and everything and uh, – They would have, but it would have been – I mean, I don't know the full plan of it, but it was pretty much like uh, if you're interested in doing a Paradise wedding, we'd be interested in doing that. Okay. And no we interest. just don't want to do that. No, yeah. not a Paradise wedding because yeah. we just – 
we one two of our friends got married down in Mexico a couple of years ago, and they just had we just saw what they had to go through. Just they had to narrow down their guest list a lot. Yeah. It wasn't a lot of their control. Yeah, um, which makes sense obviously because it's the bachelor and they're doing everything for you, and it's still a beautiful ceremony. But sure. um, it wasn't just something that we were really interested in. You know, we did our engagement on on Bachelor, yeah. which was incredible because it not only the TV aspect of it put that aside, but we got. I got to propose to Ashley in the first place that we met, which yeah, was incredible. That's great. You know, I know that's kind of surreal to be like, yeah, we first met on Bachelor in Paradise, but we did. But that's the reality. Um, it is just the reality. So it's and special to you guys. Exactly. And just going back down there and, and being able to really take that in for a minute. Like, that's wow, really this cool. is three years ago. I saw you walking down those stairs. That's crazy. That's um, nice. And that's then think really about nice. everything. It's, yeah, everything that's happened in between. So that was pretty cool. Um, so we were like, you know, we got engaged with Bachelor, and I think we're going to get married on our own. But that's, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. But it's fun, man. So still yeah. in the early processes. We got to get, like, the saved dates out and all that good stuff. Do you have a date set? Uh, in August. In August uh, uh, yeah, next year. 2019. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're circling September of next year, oh, but okay. we might move to October. We, we don't know yet. We're still... Well, especially if it's over here, you're fine weather-wise. Like, weather-wise, we're, we're fine. We're yeah. just, for over there, we have to think about the weather, so we we're going to do either... It's hot, but we want a summer wedding, so we're either yeah. going to do August or September because, man, June is just fucking rainy on the east coast is it now. really it's bad okay. it's gotten like worse so like yeah. not to bore you with weather but like oh. june it should be it used to be june july august would be summer now it's it's august it's july august and some of september it's you, shortening you it probably sucks yeah you probably did this you looked at the weather oh yeah <laughs> i mean we we looked oh yeah we you started gotta. circling dates and going well did it rain last year? Did it rain this year? It was like, you, you, you kind of want to get that because we're going to be outside as well. It's going to totally. be a backyard, beautiful, whatever. It's all so, guess and check, though. You're like, just pray. Pray we get nice weather. Yeah, you guys well, will be good over here, though. We should be good. Yeah, my uh, one of my best friends, I was in his wedding. He got married up in Napa. In the, oh, okay. And um, the, the rehearsal was beautiful. It was like it was out by this little old pond, and it was like out in the vineyard and everything. Poured rain the next day. Sucks. Oh. Had to move it all inside. Oh, that sucks. Can you sucks. believe it? Yeah, yeah, it sucks. And they really turned it into something special because um, their whoever officiated it was our, it was our friend Julie, and she's like, "Well, you know what happens when you tie the knot and get it wet? It becomes stronger." Oh, that's kind and of. And I was line. like, "Yeah, that's very true." And that's like, cute. And he was a little bit like, "Fuck." Fuck, fuck, yeah. you know, because like I was with them. You're watching this weather and there's these clouds coming in. I was like, nah, man, it's going to pass us. It's going to be fine. It's, be fine. it's everything. Oh, boy. Yeah, not so Niagara much, Falls but, starts coming down. Yeah. That's so tough. They, so, um, yeah, the, the wedding planning, I'm so happy for you guys. Thanks, buddy. You too, man. Thank you very much. And both we, engaged men. We're both engaged men, yeah. and it's uh, it's great. And to, to hear that she started with Superman. Oh, it's is. incredible. She's a keeper. She's a big she's a big film buff. We really She is. So yeah. uh, one of the things that we first started bonding over was um I I quoted uh Rain Man. Oh, and nice. she loves Rain Man. She's a big Tom she's a big cruise. Big, big cruise, cruise control. Guy. Yeah, yeah. And so am I, because yeah. as soon as he started playing Ethan Hunt, it was over for me. Yeah. Mission I get Impossible it. is one of my favorite franchises. Yep. So um I'm a big uh Tom Cruise guy. So we started like bonding over that and I would quote like a few good men and Jerry Maguire. Oh yeah. And so then I was like, Oh, okay, she knows what's up. She knows her she knows her movie stuff. She does. She's a big rom com though. Her favorite movie of all time is The Wedding Planner. Which, oh, hey, that know, is that is not a bad it's rom not a bad com, one. You know, too good for her. It could have been worse. She could have been like not it said the notebook or something very generic. She was like, the wedding planner. It's unique, but you know what? I, I love it. Hey, I have a rom com that is in my top ten films all time. What is it? When the, Harry met Sally. Sally. Of course. Yeah. Oh, it's just It's the best. When he so I always say how at, it's just amazing. It's, it's amazing. So that, that movie's very near and dear to my heart because of the story of Ashley and myself being friends and so and like overcoming a lot. Now, granted, it didn't take me 12 years. It took right. me three, but... <laughs> you weren't running on New Year's Eve. No. no. When you realize you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody, you want the rest of your life to start right away. As soon as possible. <laughs> totally. And so, uh, but when we... So Ashley and I did a, a, a video on YouTube called The Story of Us where we kind of like announced our relationship because we knew yeah. that people, once we said, hey, we're together, people were going to be like, what the fuck? How yeah. did this happen? <laughs> and so we released this 45-minute video just kind of like, where we just talked about everything and anything. And uh, we set it up because we love Harry, when Harry met Sally so much that we actually, we sat down on a couch and it was very similar to the way they interviewed couples throughout the movie. And then oh, at the end, yeah. it's, it's Harry and Sally. Yeah. And we also uh, had the same exact wallpaper. 
up behind us oh, that they have at the end of the movie. And well done, so, sir. Yeah, we were like, you know, kind of making it our little baby. Well done. Yeah, yeah. I love that. It's like, I knew like you know when you have a good melon. Yeah. That, that, I love that movie so much. <laughs> it's the best. But, uh, two, I want to get to Superman. And you mentioned this, which I think is – I need I need to pick your brain on this. So has Ashley seen Superman 3? No. And you were saying it's not that bad of a movie. No, she won't like it. <laughs> I think I can't tell like the nostalgia from me because yeah. when I was a kid, every time we, we would go, go and rent movies every Friday, and mm. I would cycle through one through four. Yeah, like, every I would other too. it would just be like I'd rent Quest for Peace, then the next week I'd rent Superman two, then the next week I'd Superman three, and then the first one, and then boom, boom, and just cycle through those. Yeah, and, and I get so, it. Um, and so like man, Superman three. I it get it. It has its moments. I get it. Like, there are things that I cannot defend. But, man, I watched that a couple of years ago. And I got to admit, I I was just never bored. I was <laughs> never bored. And Richard Pryor, I get it. Like, there's t- there's things in that movie that I really don't like. Like, the opening credit, uh, the the title sequence where it's, like, them yeah. walking through. It and it's, like, that bumbling guy. It's yeah, the painter. And the thing falls on his head. And, and then, it gets filled. The, the, the phone booth gets filled with water or something. I'm like, is but, that? Uh, wait, yes. Did if, I mean? uh, it, was, it wasn't the phone booth. It was the car. The car. The car it. gets filled with water. But I got to say, man, that is one of the coolest parts because then, <laughs> then Clark sees it. And then he goes in the photo booth. And the kid, like, starts putting money in to take photos. And oh. then Superman comes out. And he, like, grabs the pictures and, like, looks through them really quickly. And he sees, like, the change. Uh-huh. I know that's super cheesy. But Didn't that's he a, rip it just he, to make sure there was one? He ripped it and gave him just the bottom one, which right. is just him. Which is just Superman. And then he flies to the car, lands on it, rips open the sunroof, yeah. pulls up the guy, and then like in just the most Superman way possible, just like shakes his hand and looks around. And I was like, you know what? I love that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I get it. See, it's, yeah, I, I love it when he turns dark oh, and he becomes so good and he's drinking and, and he's in there and he's doing the peanuts and they're just it gets crashing mirror, and then he like he looks it's like that it's, I thought it was pretty visually cool though because he uses his lasers but they don't show the lasers yeah, it's like it just the mirrors melts. just like melt and then like the kid's like Superman it, it, like I said it has its moments but y- it hit you the same time for me yeah. when you're that age and you're watching these Superman movies you can't, you're, you're not sitting there as a film buff going well, the tone is completely different yeah. from Superman 2 to Superman 3, and it got really ridiculous when Superman 4 comes around, but I still say in Superman 4, there's one of my favorite Clark Kent moments. Clark oh. Kent Superman moments. Hold on, can I get, try to guess it? Yeah, guess Give me, it. Uh, five seconds. Uh, Clark yeah. Kent, Clark Kent. Uh, it's a Clark Kent Superman moment. Like, it's where Superman can do st- something, and then Clark... It's like I'm trying to I'm trying to paint the picture. Okay, the only thing I can really think of that I I love so much in that movie is when he's talking to Lacey, I think it is. Yeah. And so it's when Lois and Lacey are like cooking double dinner. Double date. Double date. And then it's supposed to be with Clark and Superman. Yep. And then Superman comes. Uh-huh. You're oh, no, 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 no. So what happens is Clark is there first, and then Lois is like, remember the dress, Clark? compliment the dress right and then he likes to look at Lacey and he's like hey neat dress <laughs> and then she's like oh, oh god and then he flies off comes back as Superman uh-huh. and then of course what does he do he walks up to Lacey and he's like oh that's, that's a beautiful a- dress yes and it was like that is awesome <laughs> I love so the moment in question is it's like wait, Lacey's like where's Clark because Superman's been hanging for a bit right mm-hmm. and he goes and he looks at the doorbell and the doorbell rings. Oh yeah! Like Superman can fucking use his mind. <laughs> he's so he's that super. Yeah. And the doorbell rings, and then all of a sudden you see him go like this off camera, mm-hmm. focusing on Lacey and Lois as they go, and they open the door and they go, hey, hey, nobody's there. And then all of a sudden, Clark goes, oh, hi. Yeah. It, it just he went from here to there in like. And it's just the timing is really, really well done. Oh, totally. For for a movie that introduced Nuclear Man. I know. You well, know that's where God. it got. Did weird. You, I got super weird, but the deleted scene is I, I only came across that like five years ago where it was not nuclear man, but like Superman is fighting this creature that Lex Luthor first creates, but it's like a Frankenstein. Do you oh, remember seeing that? Yes, this? yes, I do. That I do. is I, weird. It's really weird. I mean that whole movie's weird. I mean they it talked is. they talked uh, Gene Hackman coming back, you know, and paying him an absurd amount of money. I know. Well, he's and then uh, John Cryer I is know, the nephew. Lenny, what? Oh, it's like that's a great part. Like one part I always remember at the end where he's like, "You're not gonna believe this." 
but it's Superman. <laughs> like, it's so bad. I will. But... Say, it's so bad. But man, I'm sorry, Christopher Reeve. Here's the thing about he's Superman. So good. 3. He's so good. Like even the in the, the press uh, the speech that he gives in front of like the yeah the state the of the United Union Nations or, or the whatever. United it is. Nations. Yeah. Like, oh, that is just like that's. That's what I not to get like too deep into Superman hand, but yeah. like that scene is what I wanted in Batman v Superman when Henry Cavill walks into the courtroom. It was like yeah. I need to I need him to come up and be Superman and be yeah. like I messed up. Like yeah. I I can be better and I will be better. Yeah. Like because like in in that speech he talks about like how like he needs to take like I've tried to stay out but like I've realized with nuclear weapons now I need to intervene yeah for the better faith in humanity now whether that's right or wrong it can be up to debate but still it's a very interesting concept yep. and when in Batman v Superman I remember seeing the trailer and he walks into the courtroom and everybody's just looking at him and it's that God Zack Snyder is so freaking good at visuals it's that yeah, he one is. shot where you just see his ass walking down mm-hmm. and like people's reaction behind it, and it was like, I love that. <sighs> So let me yeah let's get into the Superman in the DCEU. So what are what were your thoughts on Man of Steel? Oh, I when I first saw it, I really liked it, and okay. I've grown to love that movie now. Yeah. Um, the more I see it, the more I enjoy it. I think. Listen, me too. The last forty five minutes, I don't think it falls apart. A lot of people say that it does get to a point where whew, we need to like settle down, take a breather, get a little human emotion back in here because yeah. I can't see 17 buildings falling on people I and not was, be yeah. like, this is a bit much. It, it was a bit much. Yeah. That That is my – seriously, my only you know, critique is that that – and that fight with Zod mm-hmm. went on way too long. Oh, yeah. Went but, on way too long, too many – but to your point. Buildings falling everywhere. It's like how much – How much destruction it, can we possibly get in this movie? It was a little movie. indulgent because of the CGI. It's like – we're gonna throw a lot of shit at you totally. visually, you and know, like I can't, I, I I can't agree when people are like, "Well, that was the point of Batman v Superman." It was like, "No, listen, Man after. of Steel happened exactly," and then they're like, "Okay, we gotta do a little damage control on yes. this," and be like, you know, and somebody brilliantly, whoever came up with the idea of putting Bruce Wayne in the rubble, brilliant. Because I then, love that. It, That's my favorite part of the movie oh, when he's running into the dude, damage. Dude, yeah, it, 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 it's very geeky because I love seeing the. The eyes, you know, when he, and there's Bruce Wayne looking. I mean, oh my god, totally it's agree with you. Legitimately, like when I was first watching Batman v Superman, and the first ten minutes, I was like, I, I, I could have jumped through the ceiling because I was just so happy and like and with the music because it was still Hans Zimmer's score that was oh, playing yeah. and like you could see the destruction from dun, an outside perspective. Dun, 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 oh, and then dun, he's like, dun, yeah. oh, dun, 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 dun. oh this is my a, god! Everybody watching Jared right now, this is true geeky. Oh, this it was is amazing. True. I'm like, I, I just watched you light up. And Dude, this is fantastic because like you just that's what movies are all about, man. Like they just give you that feeling that yeah. you just don't get anywhere else. And Man of Steel, like I, I love, I, I, I love yeah. the, the the two fathers are my favorite part, Kevin Costner and and. And, and, and Russell Crowe yeah. and like the, the differences between their ideologies about how Russell Crowe thinks that like Superman needs to present himself to the world and like I get that the tornado scene where he dies is a mixed bag spoiler alert from yeah. Man of Steel sorry everyone um, but at the same time like I think it is a mixed bag but man that's a powerful statement I love that, ver- that like I love that they did it that way I, I really do, do because too. it really did usher Superman into our world. Mm-hmm. Because if you think about it, and Perry White says this, Lawrence Fishburne, can you imagine if this was real? Yeah. What the world would do. They would react exactly what I feel Zack Snyder was going for. I agree. They would be like, nope, boom, I'm get, I'm taking you out. And yeah. it's like, no, no, no. How many times can I tell you? I'm on your side. I'm on your side. And it's this hesitancy that comes between – him and working with the the military, yep. And then you know Zod's people, like he's there trying to do both, get totally. them out of the way, save. I mean, I, there's a great part where uh, like Zora jumps in the air, knocks a guy out of a helicopter. There's Superman, grabs him. You okay? Poof. Yeah, zips he's right back finding out. The, he's finding the moments of becoming Superman, exactly. and I get it. I I thought they made it very clear in Man of Steel that he wasn't Superman yet, mm-hmm. and then the backlash that happens, including the Superman doesn't kill. He's snapped Zod's neck. I, I thought, I thought, I loved it. I loved it too. I loved it I, so much. When I first saw that, my, when he snaps his neck, oh. my fucking jaw yeah. went so went Same. through the floor. Yep. To whatever basement was in that movie theater, yeah. because it was just so 
jarring, but like, because I remember thinking like, that's such a powerful moment when he finally gets him down and then Zod's like saying like, because, you know, if you love these people so much, then you can mourn for them. Yeah. And then, you know, he's holding his neck and then Hans Zimmer's music is swelling up and he's like holding him by the jaw. vision's about to it's kill that like family. It's just like getting closer and like people are like, oh, couldn't you move his eyes? And it's like, no, it takes up his entire retina. It's like, yeah. I know it's a little geeky, whatever. Sure. But like, and then like, it's like, I remember in being that moment, like, oh my God, what's like, it just not knowing what's going to happen and literally just grabbing the, the chair mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden just snaps it. And it was like, but the best part of that, that scene is the reaction that Superman has to it. It's not like he like snaps his neck. He's like, all right, well, yep. on to the next one. Right. It's like he gets he's down. He's tortured. He's tortured, right? And that's, I don't think Man of Steel is where Superman went wrong. I think Batman v Superman is where Superman went wrong. Yes. like. He was then relocated a little bit to the to the background. Yeah, it's like he's went to the background. And, like, it's like the reason I love Man of Steel is because there is consequences in that movie. But, like, Superman reacts to him. Like, when he kills Zod, he's he's down on the ground. Like Oh, yeah, he's, he's broken. He's a broken and, man. And I love that D de- – it's like removing the mythology from Superman. Mm-hmm. I felt like he's – I just killed the last of my kind because I had to. Yeah. And, and- – I don't know. That or, just gets me. I wasn't even thinking about killing one of his kind. I was like, just killing in general. Like, just killing in general, like, too. I think it just broke him. So, like, in Batman v Superman, I wanted to see more of a Superman. But, like, I wanted to see a Superman who was, like, also almost apologetic and, yeah. you know, guilt-ridden. Being like, yeah. did I do the right thing? But, like, still continue growing. And then, of course, like, at the end of the movie, have some sort of, like cultivating point where like people are like okay nope this world needs superman but like yeah in the beginning of the movie it was like he's like oh people are just so mad at me and i don't care what they say and it's like um and especially like in the, the brooding first, superman the brooding like, superman and it's like i i i enjoyed that in man of steel and and i thought he was a little bit more positive in man of steel but like in yeah. batman v superman i was like no 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 this is the time where you start being like okay because you are Superman, like, did I do the right thing? Yeah. You know, should I, can I be better? Should I be better? Yeah. And those are things that I think Superman would ask himself. There's Absolutely. nothing wrong with that. Like, I don't need the Superman who's just, like, always in the right. And, like, I love that Superman. I love Christopher Reeve. I, I love the, the cartoon animated version of Superman in the 90s. But, like, I don't need that in my movie right now. What I need is somebody who's, like, an actual character with, like, um, feelings and emotions and, and, and decisions that need to be made. And yeah. so... And in Batman v Superman, like the beginning of the movie, like five minutes in, he kills a dude. Five minutes, he like drives that guy through three brick walls to save Lois. And it's like, okay. And then he's like, oh, I don't care what they say. And it's like, uh, what's going on? Well, it it goes to the bigger conversation because you are obviously a Superman fan. Mm -hmm. Um, This, we are not getting a Superman movie. Um, Dude, it's just. It's it's just (sighs) like. So you I have hate railing it, on DC, but I, I I do too. But it's like it feels like we get so much support from the Superman fans and mm-hmm. the DC fans, and it's like where is this movie? Because you hit it on the head. It really did start to go off the rails in Batman v Superman yeah. because they're really focusing on Batman a lot. Yeah. And you're probably with me. We needed Man of Steel two, part two, I should say. Then. A Batman movie, then a Wonder Woman movie, of course. Then maybe a Batman v Superman movie, then maybe the Justice League. But that's that's a tired conversation, in my opinion. Oh, it's so tired and so it's just <laughs> it's, done. It's done, and now here's the thing: <clears throat> the the news comes out that Henry Cavill is no longer doing this. Yeah, and then he goes and he does some vague kind of Instagramming. Yeah, what was the, like, what was your thoughts on that? I think. What I think is is that he was ne- trying to negotiate something, mm-hmm. and his reps are talking to DC and, and vice versa, and nothing's really working. And the one of the, the story is that maybe they were ne- trying to negotiate for him to appear in Shazam, and I think that's a that was a leak from his his people. Mm-hmm. His people put it out there on uh, THR to show just how much people love him as Superman. And then all the reports are coming out and like DC says, no, we still have a great – still have a great relationship, all this stuff. And Henry Cavill is trolling Mm -hmm. and goes on there and goes – and holds up the Superman and does this. Fine. I I heard again from very uh, respected uh, journalists over at The Wrap and a friend of mine, uh, Umberto Gonzalez, Mm -hmm. uh, El Miambe, says, sorry, 
have heard nothing. Nothing is happening with Superman. No new movie. Nothing's being worked on. They're focusing on other things. And he shows the picture of the great, you know, uh, death of Superman storyline where he's just laying there broken. And I'm just like, one, I'm like, fuck you for using that image. Damn it. Yeah. But he's right. And it just feels like, what's your take on this? That why wouldn't DC do a Superman movie? I'm thinking that maybe just their ego is getting the best of them. Is their, that yeah. their pride better yet? Their pride is like, they're like, no, we're not doing it. Nobody like, we're not going to let the, uh, you know, we're not going to let Hen- Henry Cavill decide when a Superman movie is going to be made. We decide it because that's the only thing I can think God, of. God, that like, makes a lot of sense. It would be like I, they're obviously trying to follow Marvel and they're like, well, look what Marvel's doing with Guardians of the Galaxy and all these different characters that like Ant-Man and like blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And it's like Marvel can do that because they got their core characters correct. They <laughs> did them justice. They did you them know? justice. Yeah. Like and- Iron Man's fine. Captain America fi- is fine. If those two characters were in disarray, yeah. then they wouldn't be able to pull off some of the other like Guardians. Small movies. Guardians. Yeah. Ant-Man. Because nobody would have faith in them. Similar so, to yeah. like Shazam looks cool. Don't get me wrong. Aquaman, I'm still up in the air about. I'm sorry. That five-minute trailer was cool, but there is a lot of CGI in that. Yeah. And I get that it's, you know, uh, it's going to be taking place underwater and yeah, it's going to be a so, lot of CGI. Right. But like there is this, you know, detachment when you have CGI, an overabundance of it. So I love J- James Wan's doing it, right? James Wan, yeah. So, like, I'm I'm excited to see his take on it. Me too. Uh, I, I need to see it first. But, yeah, I need to see it. I'm I'm a little reserved on that, too. Shazam but, more, like, got me with their trailer. Oh, totally, I was like, oh, it, that looks great. It looks something different, right? Yeah. You need something different right now. Which is, I think, to your point, that's what they did. They kind of – but this thing – and I know there's this narrative. I know there's this conversation that it's like they're trying to catch Marvel or they're trying to kind of imitate Marvel. I mean, what happens when there's no Superman movie, there's no development on it, there's like, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, we're doing Shazam. And you're like, what? Why? Like, That's my question. Why? Get your character. I, I get love your Shazam, characters but right. it, it, it seemed like it was like they're, they're skipping over a couple steps and going straight to the Guardians of the Galaxy route. It was almost as if they just like had this idea in their head for the past five years of being yeah. like, this is what's going to happen. Because like, hypothetically, if Batman v Superman was was sell- received better than it was, yeah. similar to Justice League, then, you know, you nobody would be complaining. I'm sure there'd be a Man of Steel in production right now. Sure. But they underperformed. And now I think DC's like panicking. And they're like, no, well, we already, we already were going to make Shazam and, and Aquaman. So we got to release those movies. But now they're delaying Wonder Woman to 2020. Right. I'm sorry. I, I get the narrative like, well, you know, if they're going to make a better movie at it, let it po- post, you know, push it back. And it's like, I, I don't have, f- I, I have faith in Patty Jenkins. Yeah. I have faith in Gal Gadot, but um, Gal Gadot, excuse me. Yeah. Um, Whichever it, one it is, I have faith in It's Gal Gadot, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it's Gal Gadot. So somebody, somebody corrected us as Gal Gadot, and then somebody con- corrected us with Gal Gadot. So. Yeah. I don't know. Who I'm cares? so confused. Yeah, um, but we, we respect her. We know that she can kick ass as Wonder Woman. Dude, but... loved it. But like now, it just concerns me. Like, why are you postponing this movie? Is it production? Is some did something happen where you guys were forced to postpone it? Like, that, that's what I worry about. There was uh, there there was a rumor going around that they were going to use it as a as a reboot, which I don't put any. I it's baseless from the person that that flew that rumor but because to be fair, I don't trust. If Affleck is out. I mean, it seems like Affleck's gone. There, well, there's this report that came. They covered it on a movie talk the other day uh, that Ben Affleck wanted to cameo in Matt Reeves by bookending the Batman movie, mm-hmm. like kind of introducing in his old man Batman, flashing back to the younger days, wrapping it up as old Batman, and that was it. I uh, from from the report says Matt Reeves nixed it. I was like, nope, it's, it's I'm going back to the days. It's a Batman movie, young Batman. Fine. But what I, does that mean for the DCEU? That's my I only question. I don't know. This is what really and I, and I'm we get we're getting sweaty over this and I love it because where where is your Man of Steel 2? Fine. Uh what happened to uh the Flash movie? That's still I don't know. Who the hell knows? Um, you know, there was going to be a Cyborg movie. Uh Birds of Prey is happening now and they said the director just came out and said it's going to be R-rated. So mm. all, all, automatically now I go Wait, what? I don't even buy that for a second. They told I, me Venom was R. Yes. And I – she said it in a way that I'm looking at this quote going, well, that seems pretty cut and dry that mm-hmm. it can be R-rated. Now, here's my thing. I want an R-rated if the story fits, right? 
But again, now it's like, wait, all of a sudden now you're okay with an R rating, Warner Brothers? Mm-hmm. It's It feels again like they're really trying to please the fans without really understanding the characters. Yeah. And, and that's what bums me out because Justice League is – I. Justice League is worse in my mind than Suicide Squad. Oh, yeah. Justice it's, League is my least favorite DCEU It's movie. my least favorite. I watched it again. We did the commentary here. It was so hard to watch because, again, as we're Soup's boys, he just all of a sudden was the Superman we grew up with, right? Just all of a sudden. There yeah. he is. And you're like, wait a minute. What happened to everything we've seen? So the shared yeah. universe, you've set me up for this. We need to get there in a little bit more organic way and I agree. not just – putting them there i totally agree i didn't understand people who were saying like oh this is we finally got the superman we wanted yeah i was like are you guys sure about that because yeah. i really did enjoy it and especially like i can't i that movie pisses it just pisses me off it like it's probably it a too, better man. quality movie yeah. than maybe the first suicide squad it's debatable but it, suicide squad doesn't nearly piss me off as much as justice league no the, yeah suicide squad just like yeah okay exactly <laughs> it's whatever after everything that happened with the mustache after everything that occurred with that movie you that first shot of that movie is what you're gonna give me that's if Dude, that's not a see, middle finger to everybody in the audience i don't know what we is. have the same exact opinion and i spoke on this this morning yeah. of all things that uh who's uh, thad here uh said oh yeah i finally saw justice league at some point on the plane because mm-hmm. i just wasn't interested in it. It, it like not just recently but and i go can you believe that they the first shot of the movie is your shitty CGI mouth. And on top of it, he his costume is bright. Oh. It just was it was the classic blue and red and yellow, right? And I'm like, Batman v Superman was when we lost Superman yeah. at the end of the movie, right? He's wearing, I mean, that this is where Zack Snyder, I'm like, I get it, you're a dark guy. <laughs> get just brighten up a just of tag. course, but it it literally doesn't fit continuity wise. And I just didn't think the suit it was it was like shiny. It was I shiny wasn't a big and this, fan of it. And like it was just a radical tone shift. It was of radical, everything across the board. And like I'm sorry, I people were like, oh, the the, the you know the Danny Elfman Batman scores back and it's awesome. And I was like, it's great. No. Yeah, I, I honestly, but it was one of those things like it was cool to hear, but it pissed me off because it was like you guys are just trying to win me over with the score because you put together a shitty product and you don't know what else to do. And you know what really made me mad was I knew I was in trouble. I heard an interview before the movie came out with Danny Elfman. And he was like, mm-hmm. well, there's only one Batman score. Like everything else was like, you yeah. know, their own thing. But there's only one Batman score. I want to be like. Yours? Old. No, there isn't. <laughs> like, there's more. Your Tim Burton one is my favorite. Don't get me wrong, uh, but like, it just doesn't. The Hans suit. Zimmer, James Newton Howard score from the Dark Knight trilogy. Yeah, yeah we'll not talk about it. Of course, that's that's, 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 that's far a, more of my. That's favorite. a Batman score. Yeah, yeah and of there's, course, there's more than those. Yeah, totally. And so, like, I don't know. It just, I knew I was set for trouble then, and and so whatever. I mean, we'll see. I'm praying to God that they do some sort of. They keep Henry Cavill on and and make a Man of Steel sequel because they just really have to. They need to return to form to the character. And just make a a, a a story about Superman and not concern. And then you need to do the same thing with Batman. You just need to get your, your characters right because, like, nobody's that excited about Aquaman because you saw him for five minutes in Justice League, which a movie mm-hmm. underperformed greatly at the yeah. box office oh, yeah. critically. Like, it was I, – I, was, I, I sound so, such like a – a, a rant little fan but like I'm like good <laughs> let it good. out man I don't yeah. want that movie to do good because yeah. I want them to be like oh we actually have to put a better product on it. it's like Transformers when Transformers does well at the box office yeah. like of course like who cares they'll just put crap out because they're just getting a billion dollars but right. like it's only when movies underperform that studios are like oh wait a minute we're not making money okay we need to rethink this I and I think DC right now and Warner Brothers it seems like they're trying to reboot everything without telling it to the fans mm-hmm. or the audience, totally. or, you know that this is a reboot. Yeah. Like, sure, we have Aquaman, and it's it's Jason Momoa. He was in Justice League. He he appeared in Batman v Superman for a smidge. Fine, mm-hmm. okay. Gal Gadot still around. I get it. Wonder Woman, nineteen eighty. Excuse me, nineteen eighty four. But where's Henry Cavill? Where's Ben Affleck? Sure, everything's gone. They're throwing that away. I'm just wondering what's going on because we're getting a Birds of Prey movie. I understand we're getting Harley Quinn in there, so Margot mm-hmm. Robbie will be back, but I'm a little confused. We have Shazam. Nothing has really been announced by Warner Brothers. Now, trades are different. Mm-hmm. Trades can hear about development, and they're, they're, you know we have Birds of Prey coming next. Then it's nothing's been announced. Yeah. The, the Flashpoint movie. Who knows? Who knows? 
Wonder Woman pushed to 2020 again. Yeah. I'm like, oh, wow, I don't know what this means. But it's it's leaving the fans like us in a, a little bit high weary. and dry and I mean, weary. Yeah, because yeah. I'm just nervous. I'm just nervous it's all going to fall apart. It feels like it's falling apart, right? And so, like, they're not giving me any, any kind of comfort to be like, no, 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 this is happening and that's happening. Yeah. It's like, no, we're, we're releasing Aquaman and Shazam because it's already made. We're pushing Wonder Woman back. We're announcing Birds of Prey, but it's not coming out until 2020, 2021. About 2020, 2021. Yeah, and I don't so even know if they have a date like, yet. All right, well, okay, I guess we'll just put our faith in your hands and hope that you don't screw it up again. If, we'll see. If Aquaman does bad. It, it, it's gonna, it's going to be pretty tough for for DC. I don't, yeah. If that if that does bad with critics, fine. Yeah. You know, you, critics are. It's your. It's 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 it gonna be on get, us, the yeah. audience and the fans. Do we like it? Do we go back for a second viewing or not? Do a lot of people go see it? Because if it does poorly, yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. Watch out. Watch out. I agree. As long as like the critics are fine. As long as the movie doesn't get like. 20%, you know? Oh, yeah. Because if it gets that and people see it, uh, it's tons of, they're never going to go see that. So, like, yeah. it needs to get, like, at least 50 or 60. It needs to be up there. I know it's so stupid to talk Rotten Tomatoes. As, but no. it's a thing. It's a thing. Like, people are like, well, it's only Rotten Tomatoes. Shouldn't really care. I'm like, people look at that shit they, all the time. I look at it because, again, everybody blames the Rotten Tomato score. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. It's an aggregator site. Yeah. Okay? So, it's just taking everybody's opinion with a score that you can put like ta something tangible. Yeah. Okay, this score, this score, this score, this score. Here's your average. That's great. You can then look at it and go, well, if it's above 80%, a lot of people like this movie. Yeah. If it's in the 60s or the 50s, eh, yeah, maybe so -so. About, you might, you know, so so. I I'm going to make up my own mind. Yeah. You're talking about the 20s. Oh boy. I'm avoid that's a video release totally. right there for me. But that's what happened with Justice League. Justice League came out and it was yeah. like it was like at 40 something I think. Yeah. And people were, and, and it just wasn't getting good reviews and people were like I why would I go see this? Why would I go see this? Yeah. So I don't know, we'll see what happens but I don't know, back to the original point, yeah, Superman. The reason I think Superman 3 is not a horrible movie is cuz I watched both Superman 3 and Superman 4 mm -hmm. and Superman 4 I can objectively look at and be like that's a bad movie. Yeah. But Superman 3 I watched and I think mm, it's enjoyable. It's, there are moments there like there's said, a lot of moments I I like that movie. It, it has its moments. I agree with you. And, you know, we're two guys, obviously, that grew up with these movies. So yeah. we can we can look through it with, yeah, you can call it rose-colored glasses, well, maybe. Course. But uh, it doesn't deny the fact that 1978 Superman is a masterpiece of cinema for the superhero. It really I is. I saw, and part two I love. I, I love part two as well. Yeah. Do you like the Donner version better? Do you like... Uh, I, I'm gonna hot take. I like uh, the Richard Lester version, the original. Cut. I completely agree. Yeah, I it's and you know it's hard because the Donner cut. There's some, you know, there's some footage that doesn't screen really test yeah the screen and, test. Yeah. There, yeah, it's he's it's his version. Mm -hmm. But I, I think there's a reason why there's not a reason why I can go back to the Salkins and say why did you fire him? Yeah, you know that that's bullshit. Yes. But you brought R Richard Lester in for a reason. He took what he had to take, yeah. and, he, and he cut together something that – and maybe, again, I'm looking through it a little differently because I, I watched that as a kid, mm. and it still stands up to me. I still watch it and can remember the fact that that battle in New York with him taking on oh. three of the guys from Phantom Zone, come on. Then die as you deserve to. Yeah, like it's, it's, a, it's the best. Son of your own, kneel before Zod. He uh, flies it's out. The best. And I love the line um, that's not in the Donna version, which is why I love the Lester one better, is when he flies up to the Daily Planet coming back after he gets his powers. And he's like, General Zod, care, care to, to step, step outside. outside like that? In the, the other, in the Donna version, classic he, he's soups. totally classic soups. Like yeah. in the Donna version, he says something else. Yeah, and I remember watching it. and I was like, oh god, no, no. Yeah, it's, the line sh was perfect. Yeah, and so like, and then uh, my favorite Superman movie or Superman moment of all time might be in the second one. It's when he tries to save the bus after they throw it, and he crashes behind it and thinks to Superman's dead, and then Zod and and um, oh my god, what are the, I can't remember the two other names, but it's um, oh yeah, uh, non non, non and, and um. um I don't think they. What is her no, name? No, what Dude, is her name? Piss poor Shit. Superman fans. Thank I'm God we're not on Inner Geekdom right now. It's um, I know Superman two. Uh, let me just go. What is it? Zora? No. No, you're no. Why can't I remember? You all are killing us you, right now. You, you, it starts with a U, doesn't it? Or no? Was that? Oh Uhara? yeah. That's using Uhara in Man of Steel. That's the girl's name, and I can't remember. Uh, um, I'm going. 
going there. Where is she? But while you're looking it up, that my favorite part is when they're blowing, they're they're using their their breath and they're blowing Ursa. all the cars. Ursa, new start with you. I kept going. I, Ursula was in my mind. Ah, uh, Samsonite. Like, Not the, yeah, Samsonite. I was way off. Um, but and then it's when um everything is looking dim and, and gloom, and then Superman climbs up on top of the bus, and Williams' score starts coming back. It's like da 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 da, and he's just like looking. It's just because like he's so stoic, and he's looking out, and his cape is blowing in the wind. And he's standing on top of the bus, and it was just like I remember seeing that kid, and was like, I I need to be Superman for Halloween this oh, year, yeah. like a, a, immediately. Yeah. And so that's where it came to. But I love all the superheroes, man. Like, it's, it's pretty cool living in a time right now with the MCU and, um, like, I'm. And the DCU. And I the mean, DCU. The, got, I mean, at the end of the day, and I can see it, you lit up talking about this stuff. We yeah. are in the renaissance of the superhero genre. Yeah. Um, you have movies coming out that totally. you can't believe. Then we're getting these offshoot. TV shows, the DC streaming service yep. is coming up, the Disney streaming service is coming up. We're getting now we're getting a Loki, uh, Loki. We're getting Winter Soldier and Falcon. Yeah, uh, so spin off. It's it's it would be pretty cool. And then like we got Star, like it's just a good time to be a geek right now. You got it is. Star Wars Episode Nine coming yep. out next year. Um, it's 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 pretty fun. So. It's really fun, and it's what my God, it was really fun talking to you. Man. No, this is great, man. You coming on? Uh, this has been a great great show. Uh, it, it, the, 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 I, I love talking superheroes. Yeah, with you, oh, I could talk superheroes all oh, day if you want. You just let me know when. I will. Well, we'll get you on again. Yeah. Not only on the Riley Roundtable, I'm sure we'll get you on another schmodown because yes. you did kick some ass, my friend. Well, the first match I did really well. Yeah, and yeah. Then the second one I lost to Donica because I'm an idiot. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. oh, God. He's pretty good too. So he, he was good, but there was you know you always look back and you're like those 50 50 questions and you go in the wrong direction. You're like, oh yeah, damn it. Oh, I've I've been um, there, man. And I've then I there. and then I got smoked by. Uh, Fucking what's his name? Oh, Anarcha. Anarchy. Yeah. Um, oh, Kalinowski. Kalinowski. We were eight six, and then he yeah. spun Spinner's Choice, and then uh, I spun it. Opponent's Choice, and it was over after that. That, that. that'll that'll kill the, yeah. the most the wheel something guy. You know, God, those schmo downs. But yeah. fun. I'm excited to go back on, man. Yeah, well, we'll get you back on very soon. Thank cool. you so much, Jared, for joining me yeah. on uh, today's show. Uh, where can the good people find you out there on the internet? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Jared Haben, J R E D H A I B O N, and on Twitter, my my handle is Haben underscore Jared. I host a podcast uh, on iHeartRadio called Help. Nice. I suck at dating. Uh, it's all just, I know it's me, <laughs> myself, and two other co-hosts uh, from the Bachelor family. We just talk about dating, everything we've gone through, uh, and then we bring in a lot of experts and dating advice out there. And it's kind of like a, you know, a lot of people struggle in relationships to, today, whether being in a relationship or trying to find a relationship. And so it's just meant to help people out there to let you know you're not alone. And sometimes a lot of people suck at dating. So I love cool. this. I sucked at dating for a long time. Oh yeah, you know so. I was on three reality dating shows. Still single after all of them. It took me three years to finally <laughs> get the girl I wanted. We're, yeah. That's perfect. I yeah. love that. You're like I was on three reality shows and still came, sucked. Came out single every time. <laughs> there it is. Well, check that out. And again, check Jared out online. And uh, you guys can check me out at Riley Round on Twitter and Instagram. This is the Riley Roundtable. It's on the Podcast One feed. It's under One on One with Christian Harloff, which drops every Thursday. And if you so desire, I do have a Patreon account, patreon.com forward slash the Riley Roundtable. New goal up on there if you want to check it out. Once I get to a certain tier level, we're going to do a dinner for five style show. Where I'm going to mm. invite five of my favorite people in the space. We're going to have dinner. We're going to talk. And I'm going to... Yeah, that's going to be a good That'd one. That'd be an awesome one. I can't wait. So check that out if you so desire. So that'll do it for the Riley Roundtable. That's episode 20 in the books. We will see you next week for an all-new episode, that which will drop on Thursday. See you then. Bye-bye now.